Hey friends, Coach Shelby and Coach Christine, welcoming you in and letting you know it's time for Brunch Quick Bites Edition, where you can grab your miles with a side of smiles, take them on the run midday, in the afternoon, or maybe a late night snack attack. And this Quick Bites is not just any Quick Bites. It's the Quick Bites to end all Quick Bites. Not really, because we're not ending it, but it is a milestone of our 100th episode and we are gearing up to celebrate our one year anniversary. and we thought hey why not this is our show this is how we roll we're gonna go ahead and drop some knowledge on things that we have learned since kicking off our podcast and how it relates to obviously running which christine i cannot believe that one we're coming up on our one year anniversary, and two how is this 100 episodes yeah, I know. But what is the one-year anniversary Like, what are we supposed to actually do to celebrate? Is that paper? What's a traditional, like... <laughs> I immediately went to pee pods. Like, do we get just like a pee? <laughs> because anniversary no. pee pods. No? Okay, fine. No, I do you want a piece said... of paper? <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like, folks, you'll have to let us know. What should we get each other for our one-year anniversary? I feel like there should be some kind of an exchange. I mean, we put up with each other. We didn't kill each other. We learned so much about each other. That I really think... should be celebrated. I feel like we made it to 100 episodes. We made it to one year, and we still like each other. Like, we really, business, really do. That's, that's yeah. huge. <laughs> I think so. I really do. I mean, it's been a phenomenal one year and we have really, truly learned a lot about each other. So it's been super exciting. But what we've also learned is how much all of running a business and a podcast specifically really do relate to running. I mean, we're going to go ahead and kick it right off. So coach, I'm curious when you're thinking of this, what comes to mind is some of the things that like, yeah, this absolutely relates to my running but I also learned it through having a full year of podcasting. Oh, okay. So this is like a upper and a downer all at the same time. So you're going to have supporters and you're going to have naysayers. I've talked before that my dad lovingly calls me a trudger in my running life. And I can almost equate the same to podcasting. What I thought I knew about podcasting when we first started. And I remember us sitting, I remember sitting on my couch vividly texting back and forth and you're like, are you in? And I'm like, well, yeah, I already answered like 15 questions. Like, of course I'm in. And it's kind of like running, like you run your first 5k and somebody asks, Hey, are you in? And it's like, yeah, I'm in like yeah. I'm committed, but that doesn't mean that everybody's going to get it and everybody's going to be supportive. Um, I think especially because podcasts, well, they've been around for a while it's still kind of this out of the box career path that people think of. So I've had a lot of people beautifully support me and a lot of people that just don't understand. They're like, so you talk and like, that's your job. Like, so you just record and that's it. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's like, I, wish, I, yeah. I don't just run. Like I do the strength and I do the stretching and I cry about it oh. and I laugh about it. And that's podcasting. I think that's such a great, actually that hits it right there. It's kind of like racing. Like you, people think of the race day, but they don't see necessarily all of the miles, all of the stretching, all of the tears, all of the sweat, all of the things that came before the race. It's very similar with podcasting and business. The finished product comes out, but so much went into it. So yes, I agree. Um, that's such a great, that's such a great reminder, but there are supporters and naysayers and they can sometimes be the same individual, and especially for me where, you know, I have lots of folks who absolutely love that I enjoy what I do and think it's great, but are also like, mm, okay. <laughs> people think <laughs> people have a tendency to think it's a hobby and they yeah, don't realize that so. this is a full, like, this is what we do. Yeah. Like I'm not getting off of this recording and be like, okay, I'm going back to my quote unquote real job now. Like this is, this is me. What's that? Is that from Camp? Oh, you don't know the Camp Rock movies. Anyway, it's a Hannah Montana, Camp Rock, one of those. Cue up a Disney movie and like, this is me. It's not Taylor Swift. I'm not the problem, but you know. I mean, I'm, I'm just uh, now you've just again reiterated how much we learned about each other. And <laughs> I already knew that you were a pop culture queen, um, but I don't know if you knew how much I did not know. I feel like I live under a rock half the time when you tell me about these things. But I am going to go about one of the things that I've learned. And while I think that there was a certain amount of um, 
chutzpah to starting a business together and maybe even a little bit of shooting your shot when you decide to like go after and chase after your dreams, whether in running because you sign up for that really big race that kind of makes you gulp. What I have loved learning from you specifically, girl, you will book some folks like you would just slide up in the DMs and reach out to whomever it is. And you are so phenomenal at it. So shooting your (laughs) shot, I think is such a great way of phrasing it because I really do feel like that's something that you do really well. You don't necessarily get discouraged if you don't hear back. And I think that again, just like running and racing, if you sign up for a race and it doesn't go well, it doesn't mean that you hang up your running shoes forever. You kind of just figure out how to like adjust and continue to rule to run forward. Well, I appreciate that. It makes me feel like it makes me kind of sound like a badass. I mean, look, it's not like when I don't get a guest or if I just get left on red, it doesn't hurt my soul a little bit. Um, it's kind of the same thing. Like you shoot for a PR. If you don't get it, like there, there's a little bit of sadness. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is one of those to where, and we've talked about this before. I'm a big believer in a lot of stuff. The way it happens is just the way it's supposed to happen. Not always, but I try to take some solace for that. And I think probably because I never thought I was going to be a runner. That's why I tend to be a little less hard on my running. It's like, hey, if I go for it, I go for it. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I think I carry that a lot over to to the business side. It's like, look, if I don't try, it's always going to be a no. It's always going to be a, hey, not right now or what have you. And then when it's a yes, I do a little dorky one finger in the air dance and shake my (laughs) glutes and there's my cross training for the day okay i do want to know right here and now would you be willing to admit like what you're shooting your shot is on both like from a guest standpoint for the podcast that kind of scared you the most and maybe you were excited about the most of getting or that you shot your you shooted your shot and didn't necessarily snag that person yet oh okay so i will say i really really tried hard to shoot my shot and get Stephanie Bruce on Mm -hmm. um has not happened yet but Steph if you're listening to this please just you know send (laughs) send me back an email um I've tried for Steph and I've tried for Kara Goucher which both I know are very hard to get we have a little cat and mouse thing going um but you know never say never with running wise I don't know if there's anything I'm necessarily shooting my shot with at the moment but stay tuned. You never know. I'll, I'll okay. think of something at 2 a.m. and be like, I want to do this. And then I'll text you and put them to all of our messaging systems and then eventually Instagram. Yay. <laughs> well, that's kind of like the next thing, because I think that when folks think of signing up for something or they think of shooting their shot with reaching out, maybe it's a new job or taking that big venture, taking that big step of going out and making their side hustle, their full time hustle kind of a thing is the fact that you're going to be scared often. Like, So often, I can't even tell you how many fears will come into your mind, how many times you'll doubt your pathway, what you chose to do. Um, It it could come into having a run that didn't, like you didn't nail any of the paces, you didn't feel good and strong and you're thinking, why did I sign up for this? Why did I tell the world that I signed up for this? Because I can't now, like, I can't just make it go away. Um, So there's a lot of that fear base around taking those big audacious goals and a lot of fear base around being in business or having a podcast as well. But I love that that little bit of anxiety and those doubts kind of are there to remind us that we are stretching ourselves and we are trying new things. And girl, we do definitely try some new things on the podcast. There's no doubt about it. Sometimes it takes and sometimes it doesn't. There's a lot of trying to make shoofies happen. <laughs> trying to make shoofies happen, trying to find different ways to make the recording better. Full disclosure, everybody. We, we've lost some episodes recently. It's yes. very disheartening, but we are trying to do better things. So it's going to happen. It is soul crushing. I'm not going to lie. But now yeah, you I- made an interesting point though. And I want to reel it back to running specifically because you said about putting stuff out there. You and I have talked very openly on the podcast. And I have to wonder when you did Tokyo mm-hmm. and you put it out there, it was your sixth star. 
and then you broke your toe. Right. Was there any part of you that was like, and now I'm going to have to explain this to the entire listener face? Yeah, I was more scared about the fact that from a coaching perspective, it's something that I would not advise an athlete to do. Like I wouldn't by any means be like, hey, yeah, you should go totally run on a broken toe. Uh, um, (laughs) So I think there was a little bit more of concern from that. And I think that's why I did actually say this is me removing my coaching hat and this is me putting on a runner just because at the end of the day, and you've said it best, we are runners just like everybody who's listening along um, or just like our athletes. And you kind of have to almost weigh and counterweigh pros and cons of what's best, what's not best. Now I had a different type of injury for Big Sur and for that one, it just wasn't worth it for me to do it. It's not that kind of a race for me. Like, yes, although Big Sur is lottery based, um, it just is something where I know that I could probably get easily to it again at some point if I have to fundraise or go through the lottery process again. So for Big Sur, that wasn't it's something where I was willing to take that chance of potentially injuring myself and getting out of the game. Tokyo, totally different. So it is something where I think when we're talking to our athletes, it's something we can both relate to them and the fact that, yeah, there's going to be some weighing and counterweighing just like there is with business, just like there is with big audacious goals and all those fears that kind of come into play. So, yes, there was a little bit of concern as to what people would think when I said, yeah, I'm going to run on a broken toe. And I will say the the scariness of running a business and bringing the business up from the bootstraps and everything, it is scary. It doesn't matter what industry you're in because, I mean, frankly, it's a huge gamble. It's Mm -hmm. a lot that rides on it. And while we love what we do and we have a ton of fun while we're doing it, it's it's not all peaches and sunshine. I mean, again, it's it's one of those to where we're still we're still trying to build something in all of regards. But like you said, kind of a, a if we're going to have anxiety, at least let it be anxiety that is productive. I say mm-hmm. hopefully. <laughs> I would wholeheartedly agree. So what's something else that you feel like you've learned in this past year? Ooh. Making mistakes is okay. And you mean like losing some of our best episodes <laughs> ever? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Um, I think making mistakes to where we have an idea that we think is going to be gangbusters. And then it's like, eh, take it or leave it. It's like, okay. Again, slightly soul crushing, but that's part of it. Um, misspeaking. I've had to really get over my fear of misspeaking and just realize that if I say something wrong, then it's an opportunity to learn. Um, and I think when it comes down to it again, it kind of goes into the having the fear and the anxiety. It's like, if we're doing something and we're trying something new, mistakes are going to happen. It's like when you first start speed work as a Mm -hmm. runner, nine out of 10 times, you're probably doing the speed work wrong because it's new. You have to learn and you have to put thought process into it. We have the conversations of making sure that we're doing speed work correctly, that we're not going out too hard, too fast. All of those little tidbits, the same as with with the show. We've had to, we put in a lot of work to some ideas and then realize that, nope, this is just, it's trying to put a round peg in a square hole. It's just not fitting yeah. right now. And yeah. either shelving it or scrapping it completely. And maybe not looking at them as mistakes, but opportunities to learn. I feel like we have a lot a of that bit. this year. I, I'm laughing a lot because we're giggling inside because I'm thinking, I don't know of anything that we've scrapped entirely. I feel like we shelve it, we back burner it, and then like <laughs> we'll revisit it in three months. Like, hey, like this idea, um, maybe that that communication channel that we were hot and heavy about, maybe we should bring it forward again. But yeah, I think that that relates to running in so many different ways because again, it you're gonna make mistakes and you have to just be willing to own up some as exactly as you said. I think the quicker you own up to it, the quicker you can course correct and move on. I will say a humble brag though, we have one of our channels that we created a year ago that we used for the first time yesterday. Our mental breaks. Yeah, I, I was so that. proud of ourselves. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, well, I haven't seen this pop up in a long time. Um, maybe it's good that we're revisiting it a year later. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just minor details. And we have been lucky. We haven't made, I don't feel any huge mistakes. And we've really been able to take things that either didn't work or whatever and remold them and try again. But uh, 
I think that kind of goes into one of the other lessons. It's going to cost more than you realize Ugh. and take longer than it you realize so necessarily. So yeah. Um, that can be a mistake, going in with false sense of realities. Yeah, you know, I was listening to something the other day and it's like, if you were to think about any real big goal that you want to do and you were to put a huge time limit on it, well, time limits and you know, girl, I love me some schedules. I've, oh, you I've, do. <laughs> I love me some calendar invites and some deadlines. But when it comes to like these big audacious goals, again, be it running or running a business or a podcast, thinking that you miss a deadline and that that's it, that you're done is probably just completely unfair. And you're setting yourself up for either disappointment, failure or both. Because realistically, um, with running, didn't we all think once upon a time that this was going to be a super inexpensive hobby? (laughs) Oh my gosh. And then hundreds of dollars later, um, we realized that it's, although it can't be very simple, there's still a lot that we add to it that maybe makes it a little bit more expensive and taking longer than you expect. Like, again, I think a lot of folks automatically have big goals with running, be it a BQ or um, even just a, a personal best, whatever that looks like for them and thinking that it's going to happen in one training season. Likely not. There's going to be a foundation built that you have to work on for maybe a year, two years, three years. There are those people who make, and you do make a lot of gains when you first come to running. There's no doubt that first year, everything's pretty much a PR. But once you get into that groove of things for a while, there's always that it's going to take a little bit longer. You may have to keep coming back to it over and over again. And yeah, it's going to cost you more time, um, cost you more money. Definitely has been something that we've learned with the podcast. And I think even going off, not even talking about like the money aspect of it, but like you said, the time equity that puts Mm -hmm. in, I mean, again, all the back end stuff, like I always equate it to a quilt, like you see the pretty pattern, but you don't see all the strings on the back end. Y'all don't see the 1am late night messages that I send to Christine after she's, cause she does a lot more in the morning. I do a lot more at night. That's just the way our lives are. And it works. Um, but you don't see the long days and by no means are we complaining. It's no, just all yeah. of the everything else. To work. We never want to paint this rose colored picture that this is easy. And I would say again, above even just the money aspect, but just from the time aspect, the amount of times and schedule shiftings and everything. It's, I think a lot more than I personally had thought because I think again you go in that's like a new relationship like oh this is beautiful I love you I want roses oh I'm gonna give you a back massage every day and then pretty sure you're rolling over and be like b-i-t-c-h do not touch me (laughs) wait was I supposed to get back rubs this first year because I didn't get that Listen, I put it in the mail. I guess it must have gotten lost. My bad. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Um, Yeah, gosh, those 1 a.m.s or whatever, you know, waking up at three o'clock, going back to kind of having a little bit of anxiety and fear, waking up at three o'clock thinking, oh my God, is this, you know, did I do this? Should I have done this? Is this going to work? Whatever the case may be, kind of hoping and praying and putting it out there into the world. But I think that leads us pretty naturally into this next one that I've, I'm a big believer in this, actually um, such a huge believer, but it's collaboration and accountability. I mean, honestly, whether it's running, you know, I talk about running with groups in person, uh, business. I can't imagine being, can you imagine tackling these things on your own? Like we both did have our own businesses solo beforehand right? and it's hella lonely. And there's so much that you, yeah, I mean, let's, Let's also say there's a lot to why people choose to be solopreneurs because you can be more like solely focused in making those decisions and moving it forward. And there is more compromise involved in a partnership, but oh my God, I'll take those compromises for having somebody to share the workload, share the dreams, kind of check and balance any day over um, just streamlined quick decisions like that. That's for me, it's not even like a, a, there's no way around it. I would much rather be in accountability with you, have that friendship, the collaboration, and same with my running. I think it's super, super important. So yes, you can go it alone, but I do believe you can go further and it could maybe be a little bit faster um, with someone by your side. So if it's a solopreneur, are we a duo puller? <laughs> I, <think, laughs> I don't think we're duopreneurs. Are we uh, 
Pelaga Murmurs? But you know what? I like, love what's that. Our, what's our catchphrase? I love phrase? being a duopreneur for the record because like we are doing the thing <laughs> while we're preneuring. It, it is really true though. And I've said it before and I said it to you. I never thought I would actually go into business somebody, with somebody, especially somebody I had never met in person prior mm -hmm. to this. Um, but we just work. And it's not like we agree on everything, but it does have that natural checks and balances. And it's really fun. And we go back to that word a lot because it is fun. I mean, look, we are very lucky that we do get along. The content that we create is fun and is lighthearted in a lot of aspects. Um, but it's nice to have an idea and be able to flush it out together. And we create some really awesome ideas that started just as like a so-so a idea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and it is really good. But I think that that goes back to how we mesh because there's not many people that I could do this with and it actually be a good, healthy relationship. I do. I do agree. There is. We're very lucky in that. But I also think there's so much like drawing it back to that running group in person. It's also you want the people who are going to challenge you a little bit. Um, so maybe I think a lot of people tend to think that they have to find somebody that goes exactly their same pace, that goes exactly like training for the same distance. And that's not necessarily the case. There's a little bit of wanting to find someone who has different strengths than you do. So like with our fitness aspect, God knows I've become so much better and so much more consistent at pre um, like warmups and cool downs and all the stretching involved. So I just because of you, because you are like our stretching, warm up, cool down queen, no doubt about <laughs> it. Um, and so there's so much about like allowing yourself to be challenged by the persons, the people in your circle. And I think that's where the accountability comes in. I think a lot of folks think of accountability as only like checking in, like when things are great, but yeah. it's actually not. It's actually making sure that you're still checking in with each other when things are like not so fabulous so that you can actually really be there for the other person. Well, and you did that for me. You very gently and lovingly nudge me because I was not feeling the running love and I can honestly say I am looking forward to my runs again I'm really feeling that that love and having you not only as a business partner but as a runner and a running friend just to be like hey maybe just go out maybe just see like and just kind of giving me that that little bit of accountability that I needed and not coming down hard it really was the best of both worlds like hey i'm counting on you to put yourself on the list and i needed that for a little bit longer but just like any good running partner you are patient and gentle it makes me so excited to hear that you're looking forward to your runs again which by the way i think is monumental considering that you are running in the middle of like <laughs> the hottest summer on record. Um, I think that just goes by personality. <laughs> and still looking forward to your runs. That's amazing. So I am super stoked about it. But that does bring me to the next one on the list that we both learned with taking on this venture from that texting exchange that we first had with the podcast and the business to our running. And it's like, you can talk and dream and wish to fall madly in love with whatever it is that's going out there, be it running or your business or your next plan, or you can just make it happen. And I know it sounds, I'm not trying to make it oversimplify it. There's always going to be challenges. There's always going to be difficulties, but literally just doing it is going to be at some point you have to like drop the planning, drop the thinking, drop the wishing and just go out there. And, and I feel like, you would say just just do the darn thing just just do the darn <laughs> thing i have to laugh too because i think this is literally another part where we've been a yin and a yang is i am very like fly by the seat i still am not sure is it seat or seam of your pants girl it's seat and let me tell you you do fly by the seat of your pants like <laughs> i do like I, all i can think in my head is like the jetson cartoons like if that's like the little flying cars that's you you're just jumping into that flying car and i'm like do you even know where you're going no i yes. don't I'm just, but it like, is one of those things where i think i do that more in like day-to-day -day stuff running wise though 
I feel like you are like, ah, I signed up for this race. I did this. Oh my God, you're right. I never thought of that. You are so right. Actually, I just had a running partner ask me, when's my next marathon? I'm like, I don't know. I don't think I'm signed up for one. And then like 15 minutes later, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I did sign up for one. I totally forgot about it. So <laughs> I'm about to say, I'm like, how do you just forget that you signed up Literally for a marathon? <laughs> like that's Christine, guys. <laughs> Yeah. So you are so right. There is no doubt on that. So yes, with business and the podcast, I think I'm a little annoying with the planning. Um, with running, I am definitely down for just whenever. So I do love it. For me, like even committing to like the run Disney races, I'm like, I don't know. That's really far in advance to plan something. Like, I don't don't know about that. And then five seconds later, the window opens up and I'm like, I signed up for all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, sometimes, and we've had that to where even going through ideas, it's like, look, let's just put it out there. Like we can't, we can't analyze it to death. Like let's just do it and go from there. And it kind of brings us next is try new tools because I know we've tried a lot of different, oh, like this service looks cool. Oh, this uh, flow part looks awesome. And then it's like, no, this is, this is not working. Which again, I feel like everybody, my first thought running wise goes to the Norma Norma boots, whatever they are. Oh, Norma like, Tech. Yeah, the recovery boots. The comp- everybody the, like loses yeah. their minds of it. Everyone wants to try it. Yeah. And then you're like $1,500 out and yeah. it's it's cool. It's but, a great I mean, recovery tool. I wouldn't personally spend the money on owning it. But yes, you're absolutely right. I think especially with running, like um, there's so many different aspects from new GPS watches dropping constantly or new running gear. And it, it, it is very important to try it but not get swept into the fads, but just giving yourself an open, honest opportunity to try the different things. I mean, again, as we mentioned, losing a couple of our, what I do feel were some of our best recordings ever um, was because we're using a new tool. We've also found that this new tool, while it does have that issue where there's not an ability to back up the recording, or at least we haven't found it quite yet, (laughs) there does allow us to have a more polished audio. So it is a little bit about that. I mean, even yesterday, we're talking about the fact that... um, music and our licensing for the music and finding a different service for that as well. So it's all about trying it, knowing that sometimes it's going to work. Sometimes it's not going to work. Uh, I really do love that for running though, I think, because by the way, our um, live fuel tastings, the last one with the hydration, I've now started using the Gatorade Propel and I would have never, ever, ever done that if it wasn't for the fact that we bought five different types of fuel and taste of like different hydration and I actually liked it I don't dislike it and it's not causing any stomach distress and I don't think I would have ever tried if it wasn't for that specific live fuel tasting that we do well and really this is also too where I want to give a shout out to everybody listening because a year ago we were brand new I mean a year ago some of you had already kind of known us um, we've welcomed a lot of new faces between now and then, but it's one of those to where you will equally took a chance on us. And a year ago when we were just a little, a little batter in a bowl, now we're a full blown brunch and it's nice to see so many keep with us and stay with us and support us in so many different ways. So oh, just a little so sidebar. Yeah. Thank well, you. Absolutely. Raising our cups of coffee to you. Cheers. Which brings us to the next thing, because honestly, it's been hard work, just like running can be very hard work, but it's been hella fun. Seriously, so much fun and making it fun, I think is what's important. Like we literally look forward to trying out ways to make it more entertaining, both for the people that are listening and for ourselves, because I do believe that it really does reflect in the product of, uh, of what we put out there into the world is by making it fun, keeping it interesting. Um, Look, I'm gonna we go can't ahead. fake half of the stuff that comes out of our mouth. No, but like even this last weekend's episode, still gonna go down as one of my favorites. I think I've run this particular episode more than any others. You guys, if you have not yet run the running roulette that came out last weekend, you need to go make that happen. It was so much fun coach so much that I want you to literally like can we make that happen like once a month I love it it's, it's it was it I looked forward to going out for that run and I looked forward to the entire 
just every aspect of that training run and recording it because it was just like an element of surprise that I could not just, it was so much fun, truly. Well, and even because we released it to the TFB uh, training athletes first. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you, everybody's reaching out being like, oh my goodness, that was hilarious. And I yeah. think I like seeing the way it resonated with different people and what they liked about it. And again, goes back to, that was a fun off the cuff comment that I made in the Jeff Galloway episode. And apparently we made fetch happen. We made roulette well, happen. For the record, you're trying to pretend like you just made like the offhand comment and then you just revisited it. Um, Coach Shelby quite literally like wrote it into our communication, our inner communication. She's been researching like how to make it happen. Talking about new tools, we had to figure out different ways to be able to bring in the spinning wheel because I think that adds a little... Like, that took we like a half a, hour to figure it out. Took so much more time than that. And we still had to do something else in post editing. It was, but <laughs> it was truly, I mean, honestly, gave us so much joy. Um, but now we're going to ask you guys for the number 10 on this list, because I think that this is really, really important. I heard from some folks that they thought that although they had a great time, that it was a little weird to do squats out there. Like if they were outside, I want to hear if you guys could give us feedback on that running roulette. Did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy doing the squats because I I had loved doing them I didn't care like at first like for like the first half a second millisecond I thought are people gonna think I'm weird because I'm doing squats in the middle of the road and then I'm like I don't care they don't pay my bills literally whatever they think makes no never mind to me I want to get these squats in because it's such a great way of breaking up the run so give us feedback let us know what you think because whether it's running or um or running a business venture it's so important to like again lean into that community and ask for help which I've had to get a lot better at. I'm not the best at asking for help personally, but you know, I'm yeah. growing. My endurance is getting a little bit better. <laughs> my breathing is settling. My heart rate's coming down when I have to ask for help. It's not a four letter dirty word anymore. Yeah, it's, it's tough. I think it is really difficult. We are so used to being self-reliant that it's difficult to think of the fact that um, putting it out there into the world is still really beneficial. So I, I'm a big fan of asking for help. And again, I struggled with it as well, but have come a long way. With that said, we are excited. We've got quite a few things in the works, friends. Some of you have kind of already seen a few things in the works, um, but we're going to fully release more information in the upcoming episodes for our pod anniversary. Until then, we want to say that Again, like Coach Shelby said, thank you for making 100 episodes happen. We couldn't have done it without you guys. And cheers to 100 more. Absolutely. So with that said, you're going to want to tune in this weekend because it's going to be, again, talking about bringing the fun, man. We are celebrating, so we are enjoying ourselves. And you're definitely going to, if you have not subscribed yet, you're going to want to subscribe because you're going to want to hear the anniversary episode as well. It's coming up here soon. Join us again for Time for Brunch, our long run edition. The episode drops on Friday or come back for more of our midweek quick bites. We have a new series in the works um, because we heard such great feedback on the running your period one. So we want to have another series coming out because regardless of when or where, we're going to keep serving up more miles with a hundred more smiles. <laughs>